Hi, I'm Didier. We're at La Maison de Whisky over in Paris. And today I'm with Guillaume Quenza from the Fréquence Bar. Hi, guys. And we're going to talk about low ABV cocktails. So what's a low ABV cocktail, first of all? Uh, ABV stands for alcohol by volume. So basically it's the percentage of alcohol in your drink, um, your proof. And uh, so low ABV is low alcohol cocktails. So uh, how did this kind of trend come to be? Where did it start? Um, to me, if you take a look at like recent cocktail history, like uh, early 80s uh, until early 2000s, mm -hmm. um, like cocktails were considered as a fast way to get drunk. And basically uh, they were trying to cover up the taste of the They spirit. were definitely trying to cover the, uh, cover the taste, so they would add loads of different alcohols. The more alcohol, different alcohols you get, people would were, mm -hmm. had in mind that they would get drunk. So, so like a Long Island iced tea? Like a Long Island, <laughs> uh, Long Island iced tea is the perfect example. You know, mm -hmm. you mix every kind of booze you get. Up until mid-2000s, mid, uh, mm -hmm. we started to look again at vintage cocktail, like vintage cocktail books and um, starting doing homemade ingredients, doing mm -hmm. craft cocktails, and that was the new era of cocktail. And so using better spirits as well. Definitely using better, better spirits, putting the spirits up, up front mm -hmm. and saying that using a good spirit, you don't need to cover up anything. More focus on flavor. More focus on the flavor. Uh, and then recently, um, we began, began to drink uh, less stronger alcohol and it's more about a matter of the taste and the balance mm -hmm. than it was ever before. So basically we kept the flavor but we just kind of toned down the alcohol. Exactly, completely. From what I've seen in my bartending uh, mm -hmm. career is that I've had loads of people not finishing the drink, mm -hmm. uh, actually asking for um, less boozier drinks and something softer and yeah, I mean, a lot of my friends ask for long drinks because it, it, it's lighter. Yeah, because it's lighter, because people don't really want to um, go for the, the taste of alcohol, but mm -hmm. they also want to have uh, maybe two cocktails, mm -hmm. as it wasn't really possible before because it was, the cocktails were quite strong. Mm -hmm. Now we're beginning, of, uh, we're beginning to arrive to a, um, a, t a time where people are just drinking a cocktail for like for the, the sake of it. Yeah. yeah. And so there's also like the maybe the health concerns, you know, lower alcohols. That definitely plays a big part, but I think bartenders uh, are playing the biggest part here. Mm -hmm. the bartenders are drinking a little bit less of alcohol, mm -hmm. and they're drinking better, and they're serving, they're influencing the customers because customers are relying on the bartender to uh, fix them a drink. Mm -hmm. So they often ask for something that the bartenders like. So when nowadays you see a lot more bartenders going for very low ABV or non-alcoholic drink. Now all that said, um, how do you make a low ABV cocktail? You know, is there kind of different types? You have, you have a couple of steps in the low ABV, uh, in the low ABV cocktails. If you take a, the, which steps the bartenders took, I think the first step was actually to reverse the proportion of classic cocktails like mm -hmm. Manhattan or dry martinis and yeah, everything. I remember the reverse Manhattan and uh, that was, to me, the first step, I was actually playing with different flavors and considering that whiskey will still be a big part of the cocktail, but adding more of a mouth and you can play a little bit more with flavors. So that's the easiest way to, to play so with. So you bring down the spirit and you exactly. bring up the modifier. You just, yeah, the, 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 I think the name is pretty stands clear, mm -hmm. like you actually completely reverse, reverse the, the ratio. Reverse so. the ratio. So Okay. A small amount of whiskey and a big amount of vermouth. That's basically a short drink still? It's still going to be a short drink. It's still going to be uh, quite boozy, but like very easy to drink yeah, still. Compared to a classic. Yeah. Compared to a classic yeah. cocktail. So what's the next step? The next step is cutting completely the spirits out. Okay. So making, making cocktails uh, without spirits, just using uh, Fortified wines, mm -hmm. aperitifs, vermouth, and maros. Um, so, like the spritz was a big one. The spritz was was a, a big one, and also I think a big step in this in this evolution, because mm -hmm. you people realized that they could drink maybe three, four mm -hmm. cocktails and not not without getting drunk mm -hmm. and just being out there enjoying in the sun the, the same way they would enjoy a beer or a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. Especially, I mean, you see a lot of um, premium mixers also being used. 
to kind of make it a long drink, something lighter. Exactly, we've got like a huge range now of, of mixers, of premium mixers, mm -hmm. uh, that will definitely add a lot of taste and punch to a cocktail. Yeah. So, I mean, like the Fever Tree range alone has like elderflower, Mediterranean tonics, ginger beers. Um, there's lots to kind of play with to add other layers of flavor. Definitely, yeah, definitely. It light. if you take it out, do a gin tonic without gin. Just play yeah. with, just play with something else. Like actually, yeah. Just play with something <laughs> else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, basically, for those who don't know, this is Seed Lip. It's a pretty recent product. That's um, a non-alcoholic spirit. They call it. So there's no alcohol at all. And so this is used with a mixer, like a tonic, and uh, to make non-alcoholic drinks. So that's kind of like the last step. It's the the non-alcoholic drink. Yeah, that that that's the most recent step. And uh, actually, with dry January, we're right in the middle of it. Yeah. And so, um, a lot of people you were saying, they try to do like a month without alcohol. Um, yeah, that, that is becoming um, a trend as well. Mm -hmm. And that is also connecting to the low ABV kind of trend mm -hmm. as well, because people are more concerned about health issues mm -hmm. uh, related to alcohol consumption, which is there. So, that is, that is quite uh, important to. How else has a um, non-alcoholic cocktail evolved? Because it used to be basically just fruit juices or, you know... Um, now, I, I guess bartenders are taking it quite seriously because it's mm -hmm. harder to make a, a, a good yeah. uh, a good alcohol-free cocktail. So bartenders are taking it as a challenge. A challenge. So they are actually... We are actually trying to make the best out of it. Do you have one on your, we have have, on your menu? We, we have uh, we have quite a few and we put them in the front. It's the first page of our menu. Well, thanks a lot, Guillaume. Thank you, Didier. And um, you know, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, follow the channel. And um, quick question for the comments. Uh, what do you think is contains more alcohol? A pint of beer or standard whiskey serve, which is about two and a half centiliters, uh, a little under an ounce. Tell us what you think is higher in the comments and see you next time.